All right, welcome to Witch Please Radio. Uh, one of the things that's kind of cool about uh, doing the podcast for as long as I have is that I, I feel like I, I've sort of branched out into more genres of music than, than I ever would have, uh, you know, beforehand. And I always liked country music. I always had a, kind of a soft spot for it, but I, I've encountered so many more Manitoba artists who are playing in that genre and playing all different facets of country. I mean, there's so many subgenres and different styles that fall within that, that larger umbrella. And the guest on this episode is someone who has been doing this for quite a while uh, here in the province. And I think you have sort of developed your own style of country that, that, you know, is identifiable as your sound. So I think the best way to start this off is if you want to introduce yourself and just give a bit of background about what it is you do as a musician. Well, my name is Jerry Serretta. I've been around uh, this this uh, Manitoba country scene uh, probably since about 2010 is when I first started uh, releasing music and, and really getting serious about it. Um, we did a few big releases in uh, between 2011 and 2013. And then, you know, I kind of took a step back to focus on some education. And uh, I, I think at the time I really needed uh, a little bit of a breather from music as much as crazy as that sounds. Like I, I felt like I needed to, um, I felt like the industry might have pushed me in in places I didn't really want to be. And I really needed to go back and rediscover myself and rediscover that love of music. And then when I came back out in um, 2015, I started releasing some some yeah, kind of independent tunes. And then uh, I really connected with um, my current producer, uh, singer, songwriter, um, uh, Troy Kokel out in Calgary, Alberta. And uh, that really launched kind of this new chapter of what I would like to say is my music. And um, I feel I have really traditional roots in terms of my sound and my presentation and my style of writing. Um, but we do infuse your everyday modern elements. Uh, we have a few tracks that have some hip hop elements to it. We have uh, quite a few tracks that have some pop elements to it and yeah. and a couple that are pretty rocky. So um, our goal has always been to get people to enjoy. I, I think one of the good things about country music is even your slower mid-tempo songs have always been kind of a waltzy um, two-stepping kind of tune that uh, people can get out on that dance floor and really enjoy it. So uh, love getting up on the stage and um, you know, we're excited for new music and we're continuing, continuing to kind of, I think, push the boundaries in terms of where we want to go. So when <laughs> The last conversation I had with Troy, I just said, you know what? Because when he talks about like what artists should we compare ourselves to, like who should we kind of be sounding like? And I said, you know what, man? Let's look at your uh, like your kid rock style of musician where he really doesn't have a genre. He tries a little bit in every genre. And um, I, I just Troy and I made a pact. We said, as long as we're making music, we're both passionate about and we both love what it what comes out it comes out and uh, as long as we're enjoying it people are enjoying it we're going to keep doing it and i guess if you have those crossover elements blending into pop and into rock and, and into hip-hop like you said it, it helps with uh i mean just just broadening your audience too right i mean there's a very strong country music uh, fan base here in manitoba i mean especially in the rural communities it's such a huge genre of music but when you are bringing those other other elements and you, you have the potential to, to to reach rock audiences or reach you know pop fans and things like that you know, and that's uh, that's kind of where I, I love the way country music has evolved because I grew up in rural Manitoba yeah. and I grew up right close to Dauphin. So we always had Dauphin's Country Fest. And I mean, we had all these great country artists coming through and they all had their own different sound. Um, but because we kind of infuse a lot of different elements into our music and, and our writing styles, uh, you know, I've been I've been approached by hip hop artists and pop artists who want to do some collaborations and uh, I'm looking forward to actually doing that. Um, I think it pushes m my own envelope as well as um, I've always had an appreciation. I mean, I as much as I grew up near Dauphin and I had all this country music around me, uh, you know, I grew up listening to your your offsprings, your green days, your Snoop Dogs, your Cypress Hills, your House yeah. of Pains. Um the Backstreet Boys, In Sync, you know, uh, Britney Spears. It's all of it was music that I enjoyed, and all of it is stuff that uh, I actually do believe that you know, regardless of where you define yourself in in terms of genre and the way you you want to come across sounding, 
all of that past experience kind of has influences on where you go with your music and sure, yeah, what you enjoy. Well, there's there's this theory out there that I, I've read about a few times, and I, I tend to agree with it that the music you were listening to at a certain age, whatever that it was, when you were kind of like first exposing yourself to your own music, not your parents' music, not necessarily what's just on the radio, but when you're going out and buying your own records, that stuff sticks with you no matter how old you get as like this kind of defining uh, part of, of your creativity, right? So, I mean, if you were listening to something uh, at a, at a an age that was uh, in your development, right? That stuff's going to stick with you. And whether you're playing country music or you're playing rock music, those other elements are going to seep in because they're so like deeply embedded at an impressionable age to your DNA. You know, it is. And, uh, and I've always said, like I watched country music evolve from uh, the guys that I love to listen to in the nineties, the, the Brooks and Dunn's, right. the George Straits, the Garth Brooks is, I watched it evolve into more of a pop genre and with some rock elements. And, you know, I kept telling my buddies, I said, the next step is, is to infuse some hip hop in it. And it's already been done. Like, I mean, <laughs> um, uh, it's, it's a new wave going, uh, especially through the U S they call it sure. hip hop. And I've heard that term. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's, uh, it's a bunch of, uh, rappers and hip hop artists that, you know, they write country lyrics, they sing about country themes and, you know, they, barbecues and beers and it's 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 a lot of fun and i said Gee, it it was predictable but it was it's awesome to see that crossovers happening and uh um, yeah you know it i like to think of country music as the one where you know i i've approached other festivals um that were more folk based or more uh pop based and they just said well you're too country for us Right. And it, I, I always giggle at that. Um, and not because I'm upset with them for saying that, but I feel like when you look at pop or you look at rock or you look at hip hop or folk, like they have very defined genres and it sounds a very certain way. And country music just seems to be, uh, we're your next door neighbors. It's like, yeah, sure. Come on in. Like you, you want to sing a song with us? Let's do it. Like, uh we're very flexible and we're very we're very much about singing about life experiences and and the way life goes and i think that's where uh i've had a lot of friends in the past say you know i hate country music I'm cool that you're doing it but um uh, <laughs> not for me but but then all of a sudden a couple couple years later like hey man did you hear this this country song i was like i sure did, did you? <laughs> like, yeah you're like i love that song man i you know I think country music is um, there's a little something for everybody in it. It just depends on when it hits you and, and what it means to you in life. Yeah. Uh, because we really are singing about life experiences. We're singing about the good, the bad, the fun, the sad. And uh, it's all a part of life. And depending on where you sit in life, there is a song that is just perfectly written for you. And when that, when that hits you, that's when all of a sudden you become uh maybe a new country fan yeah and you don't have to love all country music because i don't love all country music neither do i no. <laughs> but, but every day you know i find new songs that i'm like ah man that's the way it's written it's beautiful like i i love i love and i hate i hate that things like apple music and spotify and amazon music and uh, i do subscribe to them all i mean i only need one personally but i feel like when i do subscribe to them i'm investing hopefully back in the pennies and cents that uh, artists get for putting their music out there fractions of a penny or whatever, whatever yeah, it is. fractions yeah. of a penny yeah. yeah if you get if you get one hundred thousand spins here's a dollar <laughs> yeah well you know what what you were just saying though about about the storytelling aspect of it and the kind of talking about real real life and real experiences i think that might be why it works with hip-hop so well is because that's another genre that is very heavily built on on and on having a genuine portraying a genuine experience like i think that hip-hop fans in general have a very good uh bullshit detector and sort of country fans where yep. you can sort of you can you know very easily tell if someone is putting it on if someone's wearing the cowboy hat and it's uh, it's part of an act rather than part of an uh, honest expression of who they are yeah and you know i i like that you say that because you know it just dawned on me that uh when we talk about um hip-hop music a, a lot of it there a lot of my hip-hop music that i love is about um 
it's it's about the the underdog uh the it's person, struggle music right you know it's, it's in, a- in 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 lower to middle class that's that's struggling with day-to-day life and fighting to reach the top fighting to break through that surface and get a little ahead and yeah. I, I guess that's the exact same with country music you know where we're those kind of right in the middle of the pack people that you know we're we're trying to we're trying to champion the underdogs and we're trying to make our way through life, but uh, it's the nine to fives and it's the, you know, just keeping your head above water. And it, yeah, you're right. Uh, we are basically the same. The way we present our music is different, but the stories and the struggles are very real. Yeah. And, and we take those stories and those struggles and we balance them off with like, the big parties and like bring all your friends down and yeah, let's totally. crack a beer. Let's have a bonfire. And it's all kind of the same stuff. You know, we're, we're talking about getting together with the people who understand what we're talking about and, and just, just trying to make it to day two. Yeah. It's like a combination of the, of the, 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 the challenges of life mixed with the celebration of life. Uh, it, it kind of melded into one. Yeah. Yeah. It, and that, that's what I love. And that's, for me, music's always been a part, you know, whether I've been very, very happy. I have the songs that I'm like, yeah, driving down a dirt road, listen to some music and you're just, you're laughing, you're clapping, you're singing. And other times, you know, it the music hits you just right. And doesn't even matter if you're in that sad moment of your life, but the tears yeah. come, right? You, you feel, you feel that and it, you internalize that. And it's like, ah, oh, damn, you know, I, I do, I do miss my grandma i do miss my friend um wish well, they were here with me and you know and that's that brings up a question actually i i know you have a new single out and i do want to talk about that but before we get to that um what you just said is interesting because as as a writer how do you sort of tap into something universal like that because i mean again country music is very much about telling a story slice of life kind of reality songs but if you have a you know you're talking about a personal situation something uh something sad that you may have personally gone through how do you then make that something that is going to affect listeners in that way like is there what do you do as a writer to to make your story become something that is universal you know uh that that's a great question and what it really is is it's i take my life experiences the things that affected me the most and uh People always ask me, like, so what, did you write a song this week? And I'm like, not necessarily. Yeah. Um, for me to get into that songwriting mode, I have to sometimes sit back and tap into some of the things that I wanted to keep buried. I wanted to stay hidden. Um, but when it comes to songwriting, I open that up. I open that up and I bring out those emotions, uh, the words, the thoughts, the feelings that I had. And... And when I sit down with other people to write, I think they're the ones that help me change some of the wording into what would be more universally accepted. Like, okay. instead of just my experience, we've all lost some people. We've all had sure. breakups. We've all had heartbreak. We've all had laughs. We've all shared great experiences. And it's it's just about being able to to lay that bare. Say what I need to say. And then look at it and say, this is my story, but it's not my story. This is, this is everybody's story. I mean, it, it just, I I just need to change this one word or this, this one idea, or maybe take the name out, you know, make it a universal song, remove my very, very, very personal experience from that, but it's still there. Yeah. (laughs) Even though you know, you get some of these amazing writers that can wordsmith, I guess is the way to put it, uh, a few different ideas or massage, massage it in there. So it sounds better. It, it It's a little bit more universal. Every time I sing those songs, then the story is still there. Yeah. So when I get up on stage, you know, you'll see me so, some songs, if they're a good party song, uh, I often find that I'm making a lot of eye contact, but when it starts getting really deep and personal, that's where you'll see me with my eyes closed. And people sometimes, I've never had anybody ask me, like, why did you sing this one song? Like making lots of eye contact, like pointing at people. And yeah. the next one was very closed. It's because it's very personal. And it's 
And I'm, I'm actually trying to work more on that, you know, make some eye contact, but. Well, it's interesting that you physically show kind of what you're feeling when performing it. That's, that's, that's kind of cool. I bet a lot of people do that and it's just not, the audience doesn't pick up on it. I don't think they do because, you know, oh, really? I, I see some of the big guys like Chris Stapleton, Eric Church, um, you know, Luke Bryan. They yeah. have their moments, too, where their eyes are closed. And, you know, I, I guess there's a couple reasons they could be closed. They could be closed because they're really trying to dial in and make sure they're hitting those notes properly. The other aspect is, is sometimes some things are very hard to say when you're making eye contact with somebody. Right? Sure. Yeah, it's those absolutely. very personal moments that you're like, this is a part of me, and uh, and I want to connect with you, but it's it's hard. I don't yeah. know you. Um, I'm already sharing my story with you, so it's it's uh, it's hard to make that eye contact and say, my heart was broken. Uh, I was sitting alone in a truck crying about this. So, you know. Yeah. It's a moment I shared with myself, but now now I'm sharing it with everybody, and it's it's on YouTube, and everybody's hearing it, and there I'm making eye contact, right? Because it's a video. Um, yeah. But when you're standing in front of, it doesn't matter if it's uh, four people or, you know, forty thousand people. Yeah. You're sharing a moment, and uh, and it's it's sometimes hard to, well, it's to be able being to publicly it. vulnerable, right? Very much so. Yeah. It's, it's like going to a big therapy circle and I do think music is therapy and it's, sure, like yeah. being, it's like being in a big therapy circle. And when you're telling your story, you just need that moment to put your head down and say, this is why I feel this way. This is what made me. And, uh, it's a part of me. I'm sharing the story with you. Um, and when my story's over, I'll come back to sharing in the moment and, and, you know, yeah, doing something else. So it, it really is. Music is like a, a giant group therapy session. And um, I, I really think that's what I love about it. Getting up on stage, you're actually physically and musically sharing a moment with everybody that's there. And uh, every time I'm up on the stage, not only do I thank the band, do I thank the sound guys, do I thank the promoters, but first and foremost, I thank, the audience for yep. sharing that moment with me and allowing me to come up and tell my stories and being a part of that. Well, that maybe brings up another question as well, is that, um, I mean, you have this new single out, which I mean, we, we're going we're to get to eventually here, <laughs> but I mean, is this the first thing you've released since sort of all of the pandemic um, stuff going on? And the reason I ask that is because, I mean, you know, part of, part of what you just described has been absent from audiences and musicians for, for two and a half years now. So yeah. what is it like to get back out there? I mean, again, with the new single and just in general, now that shows are happening more often and tours can happen and people can get together to record music again, that's got to be an emotional thing as, as an artist. It's, uh, you know, the one thing we did during the pandemic was because I started working with Troy in 2019 and we released our first single January 2019. Okay. And we so released just before one, the pandemic then. Yeah. Then we released one for summer and then the pandemic well we released one in in january again of 2020 and then the pandemic hit and we kind of decided that we were still going to forge forward with releasing you know two or three a year yeah so in 2020 we released another one for summer even though the pandemic was full full force by then um and we released a christmas song and we continued through 2021 released one in the uh beginning of the year january okay and then we released another one on june 21st which was national indigenous people's day which was kind of a shout out to my indigenous heritage and right. i wanted that to be a part of that um and it, you know as fates would have it um uh aptn got a hold of us and asked if we would like to be a part of indigenous day live, which because of the pandemic was now going to be virtual. So they're going to film right. it. All protocols were in place. I mean, it was filmed live. Um, everybody that was filming was wearing masks. There was sanitation uh, stations and we even had our masks on. 
yeah. right up until camera roll. And we just put them off, shove them in the back pocket and, and give her. So we kept releasing music uh, to keep that momentum going. And as you said, now that people can get together and, and there's live music again, this has got to be one of the craziest, busiest years I've ever had in music. I mean, I, believe it. Uh, I just got off a full, I've been doing shows nonstop since uh, late June. And I, I've literally had only five days off. Wow. And uh, I just got off a tour yesterday. Um, and then next week, we, we still have five shows to do. And then it starts to slow down a bit until uh, later this fall when I have a tour booked with um, Jason Kirkness and the band Petrick. So cool. Okay. It, it's been crazy busy. I haven't, uh, it's been hard to get things done like music video shoots. It's been hard to get um, because we're trying to put the finishing touches on our album that Back Road Therapy is a part of. Right. But to find the time to just sit down and be able to record the vocals, I mean, it's it's even that's been tough. Well, so, after having all this time, so much time, and suddenly, yeah, now everything is happening again, and you got to kind of make up for lost time, I, I suppose. Uh, people want to see you live. People want to hear new music because they've been deprived from from everybody's music uh, for for a long time now. It, it's been great, and being able to see live audiences again, they're loving it. Like, uh, yeah, and that that's what I love. The energy is larger than it's ever been before um, that's cool for the same s scale of shows uh people are hungry for it they want it um we're just happy to be able to go out there and give them what they're looking for and be a part of again that experience because um music for us just isn't about getting in front of people it's about being with people yeah. and i'm one of those people if uh if people ever catch a live show of mine i rarely stay on the stage there's always a time during the show where I get out there and I'm dancing with the people. I'm high-fiving the people, uh, often giving away something, CDs or guitars, uh, just to make that experience that much more special. Yeah. I, right from day one, when I first started performing, I always thought of the, the stage as kind of a barricade where, you know, people want to meet you. They want to shake your hand. They want to high-five you. So I've always been the one to jump over top of that barricade and and get down there and and be where I was first inspired to get up on that stage. I, I still remember standing at the back of the crowd and watching some of my heroes yeah, yeah. perform live on stage. And I said, man, I would love to be able to high five that guy. I'd be able to love to say, I, I love your music. Um, and then a few of them, you know, in their live shows, they they did. They came down off the stage and they went through yeah. the crowd and. I remember that experience and I said, that was so cool. So that is cool. If, if people want to hear the single and hear, you know, uh, your other music, I know you have a lot out there. What's the best way at this point? I mean, I know there's so many different ways people consume music these days. Where would you direct someone uh, who is maybe hearing you for the first time or wants to hear your new stuff? The best place to hear all of my stuff and get all of my news. I mean, of course it's on all streaming media. It's on radio and stuff. Um, but I, I, I'm a firm believer in, I, I want to share my music with people. Of course, I would love to make money off of it. Of course. But, uh, uh, I actually put the full versions of all of my songs. I put the full versions of all of my videos on my website, just jerrysoretta.com. Cool. And um, people can go there. They can listen to all of my albums, all of my songs, watch all the videos. It's free. Um, I don't ask anything in return other than, you know, if you if you want to know what's going on, just keep coming back and checking the website. Um, because you, the only thing I get from all of that is I I, I periodically get some stats uh, just from the website provider that tells me what areas of the country people yeah. are accessing my website, and that gives us feedback too. So that if I see there's a lot of people in, uh, let's say, Air Airdrie, Alberta watching videos and listening to music well then hey maybe it's time we come and do a show there so Makes it's time to set something up and come out and actually meet the people who are consuming the music and listening to it so that's the only thing i get from people hitting up my website and checking out the music for free cool. of course it's on spotify amazon apple youtube 
uh, if people subscribe to those, they can check that out too. Awesome. 